Archaeology is the study of the human past and the objects that people created, modified or used. And these history wizards are artifacts and features to learn how people lived in specific times and places. They want to know what these people's daily lives were like, how they were governed. These giant stones here are about 80 tons each, and you'd think, well, that's impossible to move here. How they interacted with each other and what they believed and valued. And we do too. But some discoveries, however, defy explanation and really have to be seen to be believed. 15 Most Mysterious Archaeological Finds <laughs> Number 15. Bamiyan Buddhas These two 6th century monumental statues were carved into the side of a cliff in the Bamiyan Valley of central Afghanistan. 81 miles northwest of Kabul at an elevation of 8,200 feet. Carbon dating of the structural components of the Buddhas has determined that the smaller Eastern Buddha was built around 570 AD and the larger Western Buddha was built around 618 AD. Each Buddha stood in a niche still attached to the back wall along their robes but with freestanding feet and legs so that pilgrims could worship around them. The stone cores of the statues originally were covered with clay and then with a brightly colored clay slip on the outside. When the region was actively Buddhist, visitors reports suggest that at least the smaller Buddha was decorated with gemstones and enough bronze plating to make it seem as if it was made entirely of bronze or gold rather than stone and clay. Sadly, on orders from a radical ultra-conservative religious organization, the statues were destroyed in 2001. Understandably, international and local opinion strongly condemned the destruction of these sacred Buddhas and people still return to commemorate the Bamiyan Buddhas. Now, let's get ready for today's open discussion. One of the most unusual on our list of mysterious archaeological finds has to be this bizarre animal burial site in China. It's just horse bones lined up perfectly in rows, and it's a little creepy, but the reality of this grave is that it was discovered in 1964. Can you imagine being the archaeologist who came across this? Such a complex burial and large sacrifice demonstrated clearly that the tomb belonged to someone who held a powerful role in society. From 547 to 490 BC, this region was ruled by Duke King of Qi. It soon became clear that the grave belonged to the Duke and the remains of the horse were, sadly, a sacrifice in his name. These are the sad but educational finds that archaeologists have to make to learn more about these ancient communities, and these discoveries often lead to these important sites being protected under law. So what do you have to say about this? Leave a comment with the hashtag OpenDiscussion. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly! Number 14 Threads that speak. This ancient operating system, called Kipu, dates back to 2600 BCE. The Incas did not have a written language, so they adopted a unique system of recording information from their predecessors. In a way, they were like early computers, early counting machines. Kipu were a system of knotted strings that stored data and communicated information, and cultures across the ancient Andean world used this system for thousands of years. They were even found in the ruins here 4,000 years before the Incas showed up. Sometimes referred to as a talking knots, they served as a writing system. This was crucial since there was no formal written language. Through just strings and knots, the arrangement was extremely precise and sophisticated, communicating everything from accounting to genealogy. Made from cotton or camel lid fibers, kipu were also portable, easy to transfer information over distances and store over time. The Inca were the last of millennia of ancient Andean cultures to use this system. During the Spanish conquest between 1532 and 1572, the Spanish introduced their own spoken and written language, which took over the quipu function, and the threads that speak were silenced forever. Number 13. The Mouth of Truth This huge legendary sculpture of a bearded face with holes for the eyes, nose, and mouth is said to bite the hands of all liars. The belief seems to have originated during the Middle Ages when the disc was supposedly used during trials having the accused put their hand in the slot and it found to be an untruthful and hidden axe man who would lop off the appendage. According to the famous legend, a husband who mistrusted his wife took her to the mouth of truth to test her faithfulness. 
The woman reacted by pretending to swoon, and he caught her in his arms. After this, the woman swore that she had always been faithful and would forever remain loyal. She kept her fingers too. This is just one of the many legends that exist regarding the famous sculpture. The original purpose of the large medallion has been theorized as everything from a ceremonial well cover to a piece of fountain decoration to a manhole cover. The face itself has been said to represent a pagan god, although exactly which one is up for debate with scholars guessing at everyone from forest god Faunu to sea god Oceanus to a local river god. Today, it's very common to see large numbers of people in Rome lining up to be photographed with their hands inside the mouth of truth. Number 12. Demon Wall At this almost 900-year-old village church in Norway, you'll find murals that are hundreds of years old. But look closely at one wall and you'll see that it's covered with tiny devils and demons. The demons are tiny and legion, scowling, tongue-flicking devils, no bigger than a thumbnail, and strange animals piled together in a tangle of dog legs and rabbit ears, each smaller than the next. The lines of the painting are so fine that the tiniest figures seem to pull the viewer into an infinite demonic vortex. The mystery of the demon wall is not in how it's told or who did it, because those things are known. The real question is why. It's a tale of scandal, fraud, and possible madness that begins with one of Norway's leading conservators of the mid-20th century. His work preserving and restoring medieval church art was wide-ranging and respected, but in 1940, when he entered this small village church to restore centuries-old artwork, he created this. The man actually spent two years creating the monstrous mural from his own imagination. Now, Norwegian cultural heritage laws say that demons must remain as a historical artwork of their own, despite the fact that they cover a painting that's 300 years older. Number 11. Sumerian Tablets A set of ancient clay tablets revealed that Babylonian astronomers were more sophisticated than previously believed. The wedge-shaped writing on the tablets, known as cuneiform, demonstrated that these ancient stargazers used geometric calculations to predict the motion of Jupiter. Scholars had assumed it wasn't until almost 1400 AD that these techniques were first employed. But here was proof that nearly 2,000 years later, ancient people were every bit as advanced as Renaissance-era scholars. First developed around 3200 BC by Sumerian scribes in the ancient city-state, this is present-day Iraq, as a means of recording transactions, created by using a reed stylus to make wedge-shaped indentations in clay tablets. Different combinations of these marks represented syllables, which could be put together to form words. A writing tradition that endured 3,000 years, it was replaced by alphabetic writing sometime after the first century AD. Judging by the story's enthusiastic reception on social media, this discovery captured the public imagination. It challenged the perception that these tablets were used merely for basic accounting, rather than for complex astronomical calculations. Number 10. Leech Barometer The Tempest Prognosticator, also known as the Leech Barometer, is a 19th century invention by George Merriweather in which actual leeches are used in a barometer. He discovered the sensitivity that medicinal leeches displayed in reaction to electrical conditions in the atmosphere. It consisted of 12 pint glass bottles, each containing a live leech and about an inch and a half of water. The top of the glass bottle had a piece of whalebone loosely set in the neck of the bottle and connected by wires to a small hammer positioned to strike a large metal bell. The 12 bottles were arranged in a circular fashion around the metal bell, and when a storm was approaching, the changes in atmospheric pressure drove the leeches out of the water and into the neck of the bottles where they dislodged the whalebone and rang the bell at the top of the device. When natural bells rang in succession, a storm was prognosticated. The likelihood of a storm is indicated by the number of times the bell is struck. Merriweather's Tempest prognosticator failed to catch on as he had hoped. Even the original instrument exhibited at the Great Exhibition of 1851 was lost. A replica of the weather forecasting machine can now be seen at the Whitby Town Museum in England. Number 9. Alien Queen Who was Queen Puabi? Normally, she was some sort of person with royal lineage who was married to the king. Most elite women served as a transmitter of kingship to other people in society. They did this by traveling. They would engage in rituals. They'd go to a village, a town, or another city, and they would have a banquet. 
and at this banquet people would come to see the way the woman looked and the kinds of clothing they wore. The famous alien queen Puabi, a name carried down through the millennia, lived around 2600 BC. Her ornate headdress and pair of earrings were made up of 20 gold leaves, two strings of lapis and carnelian, and a large gold comb. In addition, she wore chokers, necklaces, and large lunar-shaped earrings. Her upper body was covered by strands of beads made of precious metals and semi-precious stones. Ten rings decorated her fingers. In her time, the ancient city-state of Yur held extensive sway across the region. Trade here flourished and trade routes extended from modern-day India to Sudan. As the main harbor for Indian goods, Yur garnered huge amounts of wealth. Scholars believe this so-called alien queen may have ruled in her own right then. Number 8. Ancient Blue Graves During the 16th century, many of the great scholars of Kabbalah settled in Safed, in Israel, with their families along with other Jewish communities who had fled the Spanish Inquisition. This cemetery is one of the most ancient sites in the land of Israel. Biblical graves date back 2,800 years, and tens of thousands of pilgrims visit the graves yearly to pray and ask for divine intervention. Some of the graves, painted blue, belong to the holy men. According to the Jewish faith, they had no evil inclination, and inspires this miraculous virtue in those praying at these graves. Every year, people visit the cemetery from Israel and abroad, pilgrims, secular tourists, and once the Queen of Pop herself, Madonna, the Safed Cemetery is located directly below the old Jewish quarter of Safed. It's accessible by either of two paths that descend from the old city. But be warned, the cemetery is a four-hour walk across the valley. The cemetery is considered one of the most sacred for Kabbalists, and thousands of graves and burial caves are carved in the rock. The inhabitants of the cemetery are known by devotees as sleepers due to the Safed belief that these long-dead teachers would be the first to be resurrected by the Messiah. Number 7. Subterranean Church The Church of St. John is located in southwestern France, carved into a limestone cliff sometime during the 8th century AD, with further expansion by Benedictine monks during the 12th century. The church consists of a central area with a 55-foot ceiling, an aisle separated by octagonal pillars, a stone reliquary, and two chapels. Beneath is a crypt containing a necropolis housing hundreds of stone tombs for sarcophagi. Despite being described as a monolithic structure, St. John is not a true monolithic church but is instead a cave church, being carved from a rock face with a front opening closed by a wall. It remained a center for religious worship as a parish church until the outbreak of the French Revolution, where it was transformed into a potassium nitrate manufacturing workshop, one of the major ingredients in gunpowder. After the war, the church was used as a cemetery, but the practice was abolished after a public health decree in 1865. From 1912, it was designated a protected monument, and in 1958, a necropolis was discovered with 80 sarcophagi and hundreds of stone tombs containing the remains of the monks who once lived there. Number 6. Devil's Bible Everything within the book, called the Codex Gigas, was handwritten by a single anonymous monk and could have taken at least 20 years to finish. It's not the 620 pages, nor is it the three feet in size that makes this book so remarkable. It's the contents inside. The manuscript contains not only the New and Old Testaments, but an assortment of shorter texts addressing matters like exorcism and other religious rites. Yet the most bewitching element of the book is a single page, a full-color rendering of the so-called Dark Lord himself. That's why it's known as the Devil's Bible. Literally translating to giant book, this was created in the 13th century, traveled to Stockholm, Sweden in the late 16th century, and plundered from the Holy Roman Emperor's castle by the Swedish army during the Thirty Years' War. The Devil's Bible has come a very long way. Speculation abounds as to how the devil made its way into the text, but the mystery remains. One of the most famous myths is that the monk traded his soul to the Prince of Darkness so that he could complete this book in one night. This massive tomb currently resides behind glass in a room on the second floor of the National Library of Sweden. Number 5. Ancient Soup 
The first of its kind in Chinese history, archaeologists recently dug up an ancient cooking vessel containing bones and a strange liquid, the last remains of an ancient broth. The pots were discovered in a tomb being excavated to make way for an extension to the local airport. However tasty this ancient soup may have been, it doesn't look very appetizing in its present state, as centuries spent inside a bronze pot have turned the soup green. The other ancient liquid archaeologists discovered was most likely wine, but it had lost most of its distinguishing characteristics over the years. The tomb itself probably belonged to either a local landowner or perhaps a low-ranking military officer. Whoever he was, he apparently had a decent appetite considering he was buried with homemade soup and delicious wine. Or maybe he just didn't get to eat his last supper. Regardless, the soup and wine likely date back to a time around 475 BC when China was split into seven different states, all vying for domination. Both the soup and wine were locked away in a tomb. And this is not the oldest pot found with food in it. A 4,000-year-old pot containing noodles was also found. Number 4 Moa Claw This mysterious claw was found to be the 3,300-year-old mummified remains of a large prehistoric bird that had disappeared from existence centuries earlier. DNA analysis suggested that the mighty Moa appeared around 18.5 million years ago, but they were wiped from existence. But this claw was so well preserved that it appeared to have come from something that had only died very recently. Decades ago, a team of archaeologists were carrying out an expedition inside a large cave system in Mount Owen in New Zealand when they stumbled across this frightening claw, still intact with flesh and scaly skin. So the archaeological team took it for analysis. The results were indisputable. The mighty moa. These species varied in size. Some were around the size of a turkey, while others were larger than an ostrich. Of the nine species, the two largest had a height of about 12 feet and a weight of up to 500 pounds. However, the upland moa, like this, one of the smallest of the moa species, about four feet in height. Moas used to be the largest terrestrial animals and herbivores that dominated the forests of New Zealand. Many scientists claim that their extinction was mainly due to hunting and habitat reduction. Number 3. Nebra Sky Disc this ancient disc has a number of different interpretations, with most experts believing it represents the oldest sky map ever found. Still, the Nebra Sky Disc is a marvelous looking piece of millennia old art, no matter what its intention was. Some experts say that the disc is one of the most important archaeological finds of the past century. Found in Germany, it displays the world's earliest known concrete representation of astronomical phenomena. This circular copper plate is about 12 inches in diameter about the size of a medium pizza. It contains inlaid circles and crescents representing stars, the moon and possibly the sun with a series of stars dotted around them. Some have said that the disc represents a kind of instrument similar to a sundial. Others also believe the disc represents astronomical information fixed to a specific geographic latitude, belonging to the same culture as those that created monuments like Stonehenge in the UK. But to this day, no experts can agree as to where when and how this artifact came to be. If its Bronze Age dating is accurate, the Nebra Sky Disc features the oldest concrete depiction of the cosmos yet known from anywhere in the world. Number 2. Mummy Portraits Fayum mummy portraits are a type of naturalistic painted portrait on wooden boards attached to upper-class mummies from Roman Egypt. They belong to the tradition of panel painting, one of the most highly regarded forms of art in the world the only large body of art from that tradition to have survived. The portraits covered the faces of bodies that were mummified for burial. Extent examples indicate that they were mounted to the bodies, and they usually depict a single person, showing the head or head and upper chest viewed frontly. It's fascinating that, although these mummy portraits became very popular in the 1st to 3rd centuries AD in Egypt, people there still mummified human bodies as they always had done, burying them in sealed tombs two traditions were fused, the old and the new. The mummy portrait was secured in layers of linen mixed with plaster and placed over the face of the underlying mummy. About 900 mummy portraits are known at present. Much have been written about the different styles used in these portraits. Some are very realistic, others more freestyle. And due to the hot, dry Egyptian climate, the paintings are frequently very well preserved after retaining their brilliant colors seemingly unfaded by time. 
Number 1. Saksakawaman Walls The three-tiered walls of this complex are a marvel of engineering with some of the biggest blocks ever found in Incan construction fitted together so tightly that mortar was not even necessary. Huge stones of all sizes are stacked together like a Herculean game of Tetris. The stones are all carved into roughly square and rectangular shapes, but there is little consistency in their exact dimensions. It seems as though each piece was custom carved to fit in a given space as though the wall was just planned and created as they went along which seems almost impossible given the grand scale of the project. Whatever towers, walls or battlements used to sit atop these walls were destroyed by the Spanish when they took over the nearby city. It's likely that the huge stones of the lower walls were simply too large to move and thus the impressive walls were saved. Whatever the reason, the precision construction on display is one of the more impressive displays of Incan ingenuity that we still have. While the site is thought to be the remains of a much larger fortress complex that once stood atop it, the remaining walls of the structure are an impressive reminder of the Incan's almost unbelievable engineering skills. Bring out your inner archaeologist and like and subscribe this channel. We've always got some deep dive to quench the curiosity in all of us. Plus, you can be the first to go deep when new videos drop.